an unofficial review of the PMC 2523i and it isn't a loaner from the manufacturer. Speakers I borrow because I'm considering a purchase myself so I have no manufacturer and consumer to jointly appease. This is an honest review just for you so be sure to subscribe for my efforts. Unfortunately PMC wouldn't be using me as a reviewer although Keith Tong their marketing guy did do a quick piece to camera for me at the Bristol Hi-Fi show in February. They tend to only use establishment reviewers who won't say anything or much wrong so bear that in mind of all the PMC reviews you check out. I've got to admit though I've got a big interest in these speakers because I own the 2523 and previously owned the 2023. The 2023 were a bit meh in their handling of detail and a little too smoothed in mids relative to the 2523 which did take things up a notch. Dean has told me they sold a lot more of the 2523 even though price went up from £2,300 to around £3,000. Also the 2023 which is now obsolete were not anywhere near as dynamic relatively speaking. Both use a transmission line design which loads the base air into a tuned line in the cabinet which augments the base air from the base driver which emanates at the lower end of the cabinet making the cabinet really stiff as well which helps with reducing cabinet resonances. The transmission line port makes it a kind of quasi three-way design with a third driver and the 2523 do have that integration in sound that three-way speakers tend to have. They both use high frequency drivers from SEAS or SEAS, a Norwegian firm. Important to say that the base driver is designed by PMC and they use their tech called Laminaire on the 2523 and in this new model which is the funneling of base air on the transmission line port by using these Formula One looking plastic inserts. They do appear to work although it is hard to tell because the 2023 which didn't use them had different drivers. The new model like the previous iterations are all a trapezoid shape which is a kind of angled shape with two parallel sides. This means the tweeter and woofer can be time aligned because the woofer is slightly forward of the tweeter. As with the previous model they have a single set of terminals with new finishes like the matte white finish I have here, a new walnut finish and they have actually dispensed with the older amarone finish. Round back the crossover plate is now anodized rather than the mirrored appearance of the previous model and the metal plimps have been tweaked as well. The biggest change though is the crossover and tweeter. It uses a new lower frequency tweeter from C's and instead of a crossover at 1.8 kilohertz, the new model goes down to 1.7. Because of these improvements, bass integrates with the treble lower and in theory this should mean better dispersion and mid-range is improved in respect to the lower crossover. So how do they actually sound over the 2523 and unto themselves are they worth it should you upgrade should you buy as a newbie or not first of all here's the specs the first thing to say is they keep all the things great to pmc so be thinking studio type sound with class leading bass dynamics, integration of bass and treble, good balance and more sound from small boxes than frankly they have any god given right to give and I'm not even religious. Suiting all music and good all rounders they are small floor standards for medium to small rooms but for a big sound without needing domineering floor standards. That's what the 2523s had and these newbies keep all of that, not departing from the trademark sound. I wondered what the fuss was about initially, as the change is subtle to start with, but listen more and more and it becomes increasingly obvious. You get a spacier sound and there is a sense of a deeper sound creation, wider sound dispersion and improved mid-range. So PMC are actually right on these points. For this, the treble isn't nasty at all. It has all the refinement you can expect, so there's nothing nasty there. If I thought the improvement wasn't worth it, then I'd say, as I've been brutally honest with some of the reviews that I've done, 
especially the Aurelic Aries G1. But being honest, and even though PMC don't communicate outside establishment reviewers, which frankly I find a little odd because the quality of this product is awesome and they, they don't really need to have any concerns. They should spread the love more. <laughs> Thing is, price has gone up about 500 pounds, which in audio file terms and given the tweaks and the performance gains on offer, I think is actually a fair price. Now you might be thinking that I'm biased because I own the previous model and I like PMC. That might be a fair comment, but if I had to play devil's advocate, then I'd say they probably aren't the most even across the frequency response curve. If your thing is a smoother sounding speaker with a flatter response, but that is both a perceived disadvantage in the sense of neutrality in a perfect room, but also that, you know, most people just don't have perfect rooms. So you need this type of speaker, I feel, to get the best out of your hi-fi. Hence why they make sense. And in my mind, better in this respect than on compromising speakers like the Ilkov ATC. Would you go upgrading from the 2523 to the 2523i with this subtlety? That's a tongue twister to say sometimes, but the point is my initial view was maybe not, but then listening more possibly, and to a lot of people very likely with a trade-in, I'm still making my mind up. You may think differently. However, reframing that question, would you buy these for an extra 500 pounds on the previous model, you know, for the normal finishes we're talking about, having not owned the previous model? And the answer is absolutely, because you're only paying an additional extra 500 pounds don't have any brands to compare them with at the moment, unfortunately. And if I do, I'll make comments in the future. Mm -hmm.